Well, I'm Mrs. Bertie Pale of Coombe Branch Mountain. I've lived out here about 41 years. And I'm the mother of six children. And I went to Grapevine School from the time I was seven years old up till I went through the eighth grade. I couldn't go any further. I just had to go home and forget about my education because I couldn't walk off the mountain. There wasn't any bus out here for me to ride off. Out here on the, my farm, I own my farm out here on Coon Branch Mountain, and I can raise my own garden and raise my own potatoes, and I can up about a thousand cans of food each year. And I raised 94 bushel Irish potatoes last year in order to try to help support the family. And I, I did move off to town once and tried it down there about two months, and I just couldn't make it in Jaeger, and I had to move back to my own place, back in my mud hole. I know that there haven't been a child here on Coon Branch Mountain has ever graduated from Grapevine School, or even off in the mountain at the high enough, because they just taught down there from the first through the fifth, and from out here from the first through the sixth. So whenever a child started to school, they had to wade the mud and carry water. And then when they got it big enough to go on through school, why then they'd have to quit and come back home lose their education. Nothing here in West Virginia, but the mind from the doing the mines is about worked out. I know the people out here on Coombe Ranch Mountain can't help being poor, and I don't think we should be thrown right down to the dogs, just like that we're just not God's people. They want to treat us just exactly like we're not God's people. We're all the same, same one. And we intentionally make it uh, one out here on this mountain because we're all going to stick together on it to try to get a road and try to get a school for our children because I know it's your form and if one can have it, the other can. There's no road up to Branch Mountain and the kids have to walk to school to a little one room school out to try and learn the road up through for our kids raised here on this mountain and uh, it's a clean place to live and it hadn't been destroyed by any street jobs and the people all could make a good living if they had a school and a road in order to get their children out of here to a good school. I pay around a thousand dollars a year. It's cut every two weeks on me through the payroll. So much to the state <coughs> so much federal ta taxes, and uh, I feel that we're not getting uh, our money's worth up here. Well, it's coming a day in time if a young boy don't get an education, his life ahead ain't gonna be much. Well, as I know, for I didn't get none, and my life after marrying and trying to raise my own family is kind of hard with that. I know cause working in a coal mine, is, it ain't no easy job. People work hard for what they have up here on this mountain. They pay taxes on it when they buy it. They pay taxes on it as long as they have it. <laughs> and if something happens to it, they won't know where it went, I guess. They come around, the tax assessor will come around and want money. You ask, what, what do you want money for? Your schools and your roads. You know what I told her? We ain't got neither one. The school was in a poor condition. It didn't have any drinking water. The little children had to carry the water to school in fleecy white jugs. And we had outside toilets and bad playgrounds. 
And I just wanted better for the children. I didn't want to see them walk through that mud and ice and snow and their ears froze like a rooster's comb and trying to get to school and then no school to go to. Because there's eight different grades over here and one teacher, he can't teach eight different grades. So I told Robin to tell the children, tell all the parents to come over and we just talk about it, you know. Well, there was about, I think about 50 some of us there. We just decided that we go up to the Board of Education, see if they would help us in some way or the other to get the school bus out here. They claimed that there wasn't any way they could do anything unless the state built a road. So uh, we asked them to help us talk to the state and get them to do something to the road, but we never could get anything done. They just, they were scared to mention it to the state, uh, anything about it, or I think to get a road for the children. That's right. Yeah, you can't get a bus without a road, and you, they ain't gonna put no road without you got a bus, and so that's the way it started. But every time we went to the meeting, they wanted to put us off, you know, like we was dogs or something out here on the map. Act like we wasn't humans. Then we decided when they didn't do anything to help us that we started boycotting the school and kept the children out. When we first got into this picket line over here, why, it was real hard work. It was nothing easy about it because I left out here without breakfast, dinner, and part of the time supper. And we stood right over there and people said, oh, we'd be put in jail and we'd have to pay fines. And you know, whenever we was in the picket line over here, it seemed like everybody got along real well and we all got closer together. I started out here to go over to boycott the school and met some children up there and they said it had burnt. I know it wasn't any of the pickets burning, but it just burnt, so I know that. The parents all got together, dancing up a community school. Great Nine Schoolhouse burned. There wasn't nothing else we could do but just start a school of our own. And we had two real nice teachers from down Panther <coughs> volunteered and said they would teach our children if we could get to church house down here at High Knob. So we all agreed on that and all the parents, they throwed in some money and us parents, we volunteered to go do the cooking and help with the children at school. While we just decided to set our own school up and teach them until we got the road and got the bus out here ready to take them off to school. So we taught school down there, though they did for about a, I'd say a week and a half, and someone went to church house then. I don't know whether they just wanted to go against us or what, but anyway, it burned. So then we seen we couldn't get nothing done there, but we didn't give up. We just kept fighting real hard till we went up to the Board of Education, and they told us one night up there that they was going to put the school bus on the mountain. And we asked them how, and they said up Bar Town. And we asked them why did uh, they put it up that way, and he said the road was better out that way. It's not a bit better than it is up and down Coombe Ranch if they just grade it off and fix it. And this switched us back and forth so many times that we decided we'd just go to Charleston, you know, to Man, it's a little higher over it. We went to the governor Moore.
we went to, once to Charleston and talked to Governor Moore, and he told us, you know, that he wouldn't make us no promises, that he would definitely fix it up and down Coombe Range. And so far, he said he started in April, and he hasn't started it yet. So, yes, I sure thank you. And that I've won the victory out here over the school bus. I'm very proud that it's out here. I believe if we'll keep on, we probably will get a route. But we're going to have to let them know it. You just have to stay right with it and let them know that we mean business. Yeah, we really put the pressure on the Board of Education and, and the people in Charleston, the Governor Moore secretaries and the state road men and just everybody we could think of that would help us, you know, till we got the bus out of here. And we're going to do the same way to see if we can get the road up Coombe Ranch. We are not going to let up on it until they move the big equipment in. Yeah. 